Hello there everyone and welcome back to the final episode in this campaign in which we're playing as Masochida, Masaharu's uh, well, path for the state of Guangdong. I'm your host, Mr. 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 Um, France is still very divided and, uh, well, they're not having a good time in Europe. But we don't care about Europe. We're worried about ourselves, but ashes, from ashes to ashes. Throughout the past tumultuous decade, Guangdong has been rocked by a repeating pattern of civil unrest and economic strife. It's a cycle which has left many scars across the facade of the nation, which... Which, most of which have, will never truly heal. The damage done has largely been indiscriminate. Only a few fortunate elites at the top of the corporate power structure have suffered little more than occasional restless night obs obsessing over profit margins. So damaging have these recent events been, even the chief executive himself has not been spared the merciless uncertainty. Guangdong rises. Though uncertainty persists, something resembling stability is at last returned to the streets of Guangdong after the terrible disorder brought by the riots and the oil crisis. We had come close to being toppled by hostile individuals who, failing to understand the reality of the situation, set out to force reform down our throats without any regard to a broader considerations or the reality of life. But we pacified them one way or the other. At last, with peace and once more fully enshrined, the established order of the corporations of Guangdong can once again begin the great work of driving Guangdong to a new, better era. If there's a silver line in the tumult of recent months, it's that the people are eager to forget the past to rush. The status of Guangdong involves to the corporate state. For in the city of Guangdong, this one, uh, uh, this one says, A crust and a trough for every wave, every cycle, upon which billions of yen turn, such as business, such as life. Uh, through the mid-evening haze, Matsushita's sharp gaze cut through into dark outlines of rising constructions, contemplating their awe-inspiring sizes and shapes. After such a long period of chaos and destruction, it felt rather strange to see something so impressive he created rather than, than destroyed. As he remained alone, and with only a slice for company, he allowed his mind to race onwards. I suppose I must be fortunate, the chief executive thought to himself aloud. Being where I am, and continue to be, any lesser man would have lost his place long ago. As is a certain strength to endure both the rises and the falls, especially with treachery, which is ever-present throughout, now is the time for me to finally reflect on my success, to bask in the glory of my numerous achievements. <clears throat> From the tamping, tamming, taming of the violence on the streets um, uh, to the overtaking of the Manchukuo's GDP, I've been at the center of it all. And we're going to go and do... which one do we want to do? This one. Um, even with all the cunning in the world, <clears throat> no man can stop the seismic shifts which bring conflict ever closer. The old nationals are stirring again, the people have shown their strength and it will take a supreme effort to shut them back into their box. But I must move on. My work is far from over. One day I must rest. He paused and forced his eyes, and found his eyes, settling on a picture of his beloved father in a hushed voice that he made a promise. And it'll be when I am by your side once more. From the Pearl River Delta during the oil crisis and the riots that followed it, we emphasize that we, not the overly charitable reformers of the state faction, nor the meritocrats and tech fiddlers of Fujitsu, nor indeed the advocates of the Manchurian plan over the, at Hitachi, we are the sole guarantee of progress and prosperity for the state and its people. We did everything we could to make this clear, and now we are repairing the benefit thereof. One example of this is Guangdong's most recent onrush of electronics production. All men of electrical goods are now produced in the city of Guangdong. They fulfill every possible demand or desire a customer could possibly dream of at all the prices that no one in their right mind would ever dare turn down. And the TH6600 FR color TV with infrared. With color television losing much of its novelty and more models coming on the market every year, manufacturers are looking for something to give their product a unique selling point that will give them an edge over the competition. Matsushita Electric has settled on user friendliness as a drop of the latest color television model. Uh, Using a system of infrared signals and receivers, the 6600 can be controlled remotely from a sitting position a comfortable distance from the set, which eliminates the need to get up to change channels or adjust the volume. The so-called remote control unit itself is rather clunky and awkward and requires its own power supply, but Matsushita's spokesperson uh, assures that these inconveniences will be ironed out in later versions. Great! A way to get even lazier. Look at that. Almost 9% growth. Jesus. Nice. Very beautiful, my friends. Would you look at that? 60% growth. We're back at it. A little under 50 billion, but whatever. Surplus is pretty good, too. Without change, Officer Lam Hyo Hyo Sun watched the street cleaning with no expression showing on his face. The cleaners, all of Matsushita's men, slowly but surely cleaned up after the mess of the riders left behind. What was left behind was the same gray, almost grim lamb that had caused the riders to go so mad in the first place. Lamb took a cigarette and lit it, of course. He did that far more often these days, as a cigarette burned into ash. Lamb wondered if anything had changed. He was still beholden to his Japanese bosses. He was no less complicit in the repression of his own neighbors and countrymen, to the extent that such a concept existed, and Lamb knew he too knew too well that they did not. Now, what did Lamb have left? Nothing, really, other than it was now part of the system that Matsushita had set up on the top of Suzuki and Matsuzawa's work of co-prosperity. Lamb had, said, had his own share of feelings about that, but it was clear that Guangdong and Matsushita did not care about his feelings, or that any other Zujin, whatever his name that even meant. Grounding out his cigarette under his fit shine boots, Officer Hayashi Kogawa got back to work without gain. Hey, so your GDP is still higher than Machu Kuo's. Can't wait till they get actual focus tree, too. That'd be kind of fun. Nature's helping him. Uh, similar to Japan, but abnormally humid this year. The scientists had some explanation for it, something about ocean currents in the Western Pacific, but whatever the reason, the population in Japan was sweating out enough to fill, up, fill a dam. Beached armpits and wet backs were everywhere, and so increasingly was the Matsushita logo. Just before a bit of relief. Uh, <clears throat> 
Uh, middle class salary. Remember, flocking to appliance retailers and picking up the W31 air conditioning units in unprecedented numbers. The manufacturing inside Boston's couldn't keep up with the clunkier and more expensive models, and so Matsushita Masaharu found himself once again ascending to the eagle's nest. His climb mercilessly cooled by a newly installed army of W31s. He found his father in law examining his own model, put in the morning at his request. Even up here, far above the bustle of the streets, the heat was heavy and oppressive. Marvelous, isn't it? Uh, said Matsushita Konosuke. Turning towards him, you truly have outdone yourself, Masaharu. What are the numbers? Sales of W31 units are up by over 500% over the past four months, Masahara reported. Investors are practically breaking down our door, as I'm sure you've heard. The papers are singing our praises. Konosuke beamed and switched on his unit. The blast of cool air nearly made Masahara sigh relief. Tremendous work within the sphere. Once upon a time, Guangdong was an inconsequential fragment of the Japanese Empire, a pitiful backwater overshadowed and overlooked by its neighbors. It was for that reason that during the various crises of the last decades, all the protestations of the members of the core prosperity sphere, uh, that we are a rising star and a critically important to the triumph of the pan-Asianism, proved to be for naught. We're simply not worth defending in their eyes, but as we emerge from that recent instability, it's become very clear that we are that's no longer the case. Instead of Guangdong and its innovative corporations are now the future of the sphere, not the antiquated, brutish industrial chaos of Manchukuo that Komai fetishizes even now. Our economy is now indisputably vital to that even of the co prosperity sphere. If they ever wish to bring that about that co prosperity co prosperity of theirs, they'll need our help to do so, and with Matsushita's leadership a shining example for the sphere at large. Our port in the city of Guangdong. To and from redacted, 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 noticeable development in the skyline of Guangdong in the aftermath of the successful Matsushita-led recovery from the oil crisis. Stop. During the oil crisis, large proportions of buildings in some regions up to 70 or 80 percent were shut down, mothballed, or demolished due to economic instability and financial disasters. Stop. This figure only increased as the recent disturbances and riots by the various apparently Chinese-backed worker unions reached a fever pitch earlier this year. Stop. This paradigm has now changed and normalcy is slowly beginning to return. Stop. New structures are rising from the remnants of the old ones, and many of the old ones are being dusted off, refitted, and repaired, ready to face the new era. The factories, too, report ever increasing productivity as the various workers give up riding and return to work. It's hard to regain or reach any other conclusion but that the chaos of the oil crisis and the riots are left in the past, and that the state of Guangdong, under the leadership of Matsushita Masaharu, now focuses firmly on the future. They seem to have pulled it off. Go figure. We have three and a half. Oh, holy crap! Over three and a half political power? Holy smoke and fathers! Daddy's at smoke or return imperfect. You know what? Decrease it there. Decrease that. Somehow, Lee Chun had managed to escape the police during the riots. Years later, he would recount the journey, which stuck in his mind for the rest of his life, over and over again to any of his many obligating family members. For now, however, the family he had at the moment had to come first. Slightly unsteady, Chun was welcomed back by the home by Y. Well, visibly worried. Hey, and her par their parents. Followed shortly after, binding them all to a group hug. It was released, and Chun was safe, and they had each other, but they entered into an unspoken agreement. Not to talk about their, uh, the other motion of that of sadness. They doubted any meaningful change would come to Guangdong, not just while Matsushita sat at the top and dictated their lives. They didn't see any way out of it except take some sort of desperate choice in fleeing north of China outside of such fall follies, which were likely to fail in any way. It was clear that the Japanese had made all their lives into a dead end. No matter how much they tried, the Lee family knew that at base they were doomed to remain either poor or unable to make use of their talents. Forever mediocre, unchanging service of the Japanese elite and the big man above them all. But that feeling was not worth discussing when the Lee family had their oldest son back, squashing their hopelessness for a time. They said about celebrating it. It worked, if only briefly, to the world. Beyond. Who ne'er now dares to doubt that Guangdong is host of pioneers of the new technological order and bright lights of the new electronic, electronic golden age? Even when the daggers of hate and envy were pointed at our engineers and labors from every direction during the world uh, historical disaster that was the oil crisis, they persisted in their labors. Hell burned and high water churned around us, but the Guangdong workers kept working. The riots did not put a stop to their diligent progress. The expertise and innovation that had been nurturing, or nurtured in Guangdong during these years of Chief Executive Matsushita's rule had begun to draw over, long overdue international recognition. Products designed and manufactured in the Pearl Rubber Delta in Guangdong are now considered to be without parallel anywhere in the world. And the world at large pays notice to the products of the Silicon Delta. Goodbye ideal. And the factory never slept. It was not human. The incense is both literal and metaphorical. The workers within would assemble TVs piece by piece, hour after hour, day after day. Televisions were the product the factory was built to produce and what the, its workers were trained to build. That's what they did, and that's all they did. Hour after hour, day after day. It was far from heaven, but it was not hell either. The workers were relatively well paid and lived comfortable enough lives, even though they had to admit that. No, it wasn't heaven or hell. It was monotony. It was an embodiment of the modern world. After a TV was built, it would be packed with others into a crate and then loaded onto massive ships waiting nearby in the Koshu Harbor. Crate after crate, ship after ship, day after day. Are the people who build these televisions unhappy? Who's to say? Certainly they aren't happy, but perhaps it could be said that they come to terms with the situation. They wake up, they eat, they work, they eat, they sleep. Day after day, after day. They have to eat, they have to sleep, and no matter how monotonous, monotonous or time-consuming it is, the job allows them to afford to do so. No, they're not happy or unhappy. They cannot be because they're not alive. They exist not for themselves, but as fuel for the almighty engines of production and capital. Life no longer gets better or worse. It simply moves on and retreat and resolve. 
Yamashi Hiroshi had barely survived the riots, and Nintendo was barely intact, but that was a massive problem. He would have to resuscitate his profits one way or the other. If he wanted to carry on this Guangdong experiment, that however would be infinitely more easily said than done. It was dragging Yamauchi's morals down. Uh, shut up inside his office. The president of Nintendo wallowed in despair. Thoughts of abandoning the three pros and returning home to search for more worthwhile pursuits were circling his mind. Here's a last thing to defeat gripped him once more as it had over and over again during the last decade, with the specter of failure looming terribly over him. But Yamauchi's resolve came back as he remembered the origins of his company. His late great grandfather had trouble with the markets in the production of Hanafuda cards. They were expensive and time intensive to manufacture, appealing to only a niche market, and nobody seemed to replace them due to the quality. Yet despite that setback, his predecessors did not abandon their pursuits in the gutter. They innovated and discovered workarounds. Yes, his ancestors' experience was proof positive. Loss only truly occurs when someone is allowed it to, when they not only hit rock bottom, but are unwilling to pull themselves back up again. Yamauchi Hiroshi had experienced trouble beforehand. He would continue to search for success. When he stood up and a smile across his face, then he got back to work. No matter what happens, you keep pushing yourself forward. Even when it sucks a lot. I don't want to get more of this. A little lower growth, but we have a lot of inflation. Holy crap. Tempora Mutant Mutantor. The day was sooner than it had been before. Yasukawa Yoshiko thought, not that she would have been able to tell even yesterday, not with how smoky and violent Koshi had been during the riots. Now, however, the subpoena was in full swing, and he could actually see across the street for once, so that was a relief. Sitting alone in a hotel restaurant, it was clear to Yoshiko that Guangdong was getting back to business, and that it was her turn to do so as well. There's still rumors of chase, corporate earnings of sparse, and sob stories and gossip to entertain, and sometimes even shock the Japanese readers of the Canton Fujin Koran, but there was a certain sense of dissatisfaction within that situation. Yoshiko knew she wasn't ready, really seeing the real Guangdong, not so much as she had before. She had been relocated to a Japanese neighborhood for her own safety after the riots, and her editor was far more cautious touching social stories than before him. That fellow kept insisting, Guangdong just needs to calm down right now, Yosukawa. We can't make things worse. But in reality, all that meant was just more of the same. Yosukawa Yoshiko was, as always, a mere outsider looking in. How much had really changed in ten years? A lot, but at the same time, not much at all. The more things change, a one man's ambition. In the aftermath of all the shocks that had struck uh, to the heart of our state, there's only one man who proved capable of leading the nation, Matsushita Masaharu. The will of the august corporations of Guangdong had entrusted chief executive Matsushita Masaharu with the welfare of the land of three pearls. As Matsushita led Guangdong in the company that bears his family name through the recent disasters, he aimed to remain on top of it all, trying to keep himself fully in control over the direction that the state took. Matsushita Masaharu, send the help on the ship of state, but his future prospects are decided. We shall see if he managed to keep his hands on the tiller or if someone else wrestled it from him. Chief Executive sits behind his desk and receives his guests. Two directions. Masashida Masaharu was in top form. In his office at Takashima Masuo, Consul General of Japan in Guangdong, Masaharu, could clearly see that the man was resisting breaking into a wide smile at the news he was hearing. And why would he not? When the substance was all told, Takashima, the state of Guangdong was back in business, and Japan needed to worry. When he was told that last sentence, Takashima put his hands together and nodded, yeah, You will not believe, Chief Executive. How happy hearing all this makes me. With the revolts and confusion everywhere one looks, I was despairing of ever hearing anything resembling good news, but you've changed up. you completely changed it up, Matsushita. Chief Executive nodded. See, your Consul General, I've got some advice for the Center. If our brother in Tokyo have anything to say to Guangdong, then they can say it right to me through you or through whomever else they want to send. I make all the decisions anyway, so why go elsewhere? That sounds like a good idea. I'll advise him, so wait. What have you got there on the desk? Takashima was pointing at the letter in front of his desk. Uh, clock? Well, that's a letter to the Chinese. My letter. We don't need their offers of assistance, as you know. I've said that we look forward to continuing the mutually beneficial and historic relationship between our two countries and Matsushita Electric. The usual stuff, you know. The diplomat nodded approvingly. A good stroke that, putting China in its place and elevating Matsushita as a potentate of Guangdong. What do you say we take some lunch then, Consul General? Nice glasses. One man's ambition, looking to the future, huh? Under the visionary leadership of Guangdong strides in the 70s, beholden of the past, and the proud tradition of the Matsushita family, even Masuharu is not related by blood. Made in Guangdong. Those little fanfares of Matsushita's latest generation of products hits the markets. Oh, sure, there are many toasts and congratulatory remarks Friday after work at company headquarters, but for the most part, the rest of the world slept through the delivery of several t home television sets, readers, and basic electronics components to the shop across the sphere. Next Monday, when everything opened, customers stepped into their local electronics stores to browse for their TV, radio, or perhaps a transistor or two that could install their pet projects at home. Many are surprised at the cheapness and the ease of use of these products, and much later would be surprised again at their resilience and reliability. But nothing was so surprising to them as the brass stamps on these products, which proudly proclaim, Made in Guangdong, a product to be proud of, and dispatched from the Zhujin front. And that was on patrol, mostly in the distance silence. Almost nobody was willing to speak to him unless they wanted something or another from him. Mostly complaints about this or that crime or some sort of insult. That was why they were talking to other Zhujin like Khan. A local shop owner was so important to him these days. I wonder what's going to happen to Guangdong next, the officer said. The shop owner's response was half mocking scoff and half despairing sigh. Well, I'm going to be signing an exclusive contract with the Matsushita Spoon soon enough to secure my business, and if this was the way things were going to, frankly, I should have sold my soul years ago. Lamb chuckled slightly, but replied on the negative. See here, Khan, that's nothing to be proud of. Look at the state I found myself in. 
Well, what's to be done about it? Honestly, if Guangdong is what it is, and Gua Japanese are going to regard us Zhujin as useful subjects, might as well lean into it. Heaven knows there's nothing about fair about the world we live in, only what we make you take from it. Even if we could discover a soul, who'd want it? Nobody, and that's what we're, that's what we are. Nobody. We don't have the riches that anyone wants. We've got to, no, we've got no pain or tragedy to bind us together. Let them not worthless. So even if, even if for now the system would reward their loyalty, they'd always be the first to cut off and throw and be thrown under the bus that came by. Give a hope that the material comforts would make up for the unpleasant, unchanging reality. He had his doubts, honestly speaking. Guangdong never had been a country for over reliant on tried and tested traditional methods, nor has it been one to have the opportunity to innovate. Far from that, a country is one to look firmly ahead, with its eyes kept to the future. We persistently seek new ways and new methods of increasing profit and improving the effectiveness of our products. The riches that the future is certain to bring us, because of our devotion to the approach, are ready and waiting for anyone persistent and strong enough to take it. Hey, look, advanced business and household electronics technology still. Hey, that stain's finally gone once again. And the shadow of the air. After dinner, one of the best parts of the day, since Lee, the Lee family was frequently together and able to socialize and keep in good contact, he, ha, he hey, and his sister Y sat down together and caught up. After her Y finished talking about her week things, her week's things, she got tired of talking about herself and said, "You're an adult now, hey. What will you be doing from here on in?" The response was an elegant shrug. I'll probably have to become a factory worker the way Chun was. See here, our older brother's getting older, so he can't do nearly as much hard labor anymore. And even without that, it's getting to a point where Chun ought to have a shot at doing something else with his life. Maybe he could work for one of the few small Zhujin companies still around him as a Matsushita subcontractor. Hey, side. Maybe if and when Chun does that, the family's going to have something more to rely on that's likely to last. Start saving more money, hopefully. But until then, up here, I'm going to have to pick up the mantle. Why well, was said, and he had seen Hay's drawings and realized he could do so much more, but the school hadn't really taught Hay much, and the family had to eat one way or another. Seeing her demoralization, Hay tried to cheer his sister up only by half believing what he was saying. Look here, why well, you gotta study hard. Don't bother following my dreams. Look at you nowhere. But you need to study hard so you don't end up the way I did. Promise me you do this, why? Why not as slowly? I promise. Under the patron's hand, my friend. At Gilakoshu headquarters of the Matsushita Electric, a large group of Guangdong statesmen, corporate leaders, and power brokers gather in the boardroom at the top of the building. Many of a grudge of presence there, but none could argue the necessity of this meeting. Through the many trials and tribulations the country has faced in recent years, only one man has shown the resilience and wherewithal to guide Guangdong through it all. The man was Matsushita Masaharo, standing at the head of the conference table and smiling at his new retinue. Well, he said so soft his audience had it strained here. We are here. Here we are. The power's in our hands. The men all shifted. They all knew instead of our hands, Matsushita meant my hands. The power's in our hands, Matsushita repeated. Not being a sagely, the question is, what to do with it? What indeed? Beholden to the past. Those who are the last decade have striven to transform this land of Guangdong into an individual and technological center. Unrivaled in the sphere are indeed among humanity, but know very well just how the opportunity came about. They remember the instability and the misery that plagued their earliest attempts to establish technological progress in this nation, and the assistant Japanese and Kenpatai interventions those incidents brought about. Though the watchful gaze of Tokyo and the rest of Kenpatai officers have more or less withdrawn to the shadows since the rise of Matsushita Masaharu, it's by no means certain that things will remain this way. Chinese subversion is now on the rise. There will certainly come a time when the Chinese chief executive has no choice but to let those previous enforcers return from the shadows. This place secure. It has been ten years in the time that Chief Executive Matsushita uh, Masaharu has managed to secure his future once and for all. He made it out alive and through it all. The Yusodu crisis, the innovation and difficulty of the Silicon years, the misery and chaos of the rise of the oil crisis through everything anyone had managed to throw at him. Monster Hall would not emerge unscathed, of course, as expected. There had been hardships, defeats, and sacrifices left and right. There were things he regretted, things he wished he could have gone about better, as concessions he would have, he had, to, had to make. But it was all worth it. Oh, Han Hao. His father in law had phoned and sent a written message sometime back. In his voice and written words, Monster Hall could only see pride and joy and the satisfaction of having a gamble play out of the way he hoped it would. His wife, too, who had always loved him, looked at him with almost worshipful pull, gaze these days. And those were only the people that really mattered. The people, uh, the amount of comparatively irrelevant people, petty executives, civil servants, and so on, that gathered to pay their respects to him numbered in the hundreds each week. While well, Shida Masaharu's position was secure, and his people knew to respect him and have faith in his abilities. Now it's time to move on to the next goal, securing all the wealth of Guangdong for himself and his himself alone. Masashida was successful, and he felt he deserved it, and brought into a new age. Even after the instability and confusion that the oil crash has brought, new decade is still young. It is certain to be one of risk and balanced opportunities for the acquisition and usage of wealth. Anyone who is willing or able to take a chance of ca is capable of gaining an unimaginable wealth or being thrown into the depths of poverty by losing everything they have. After the chief executive, Masashida Masaharu, whatever his faults or accomplishments have been over the past few years as ruler of the Pro Rover Delta, has survived a near decade in his position at the head of the table and will now see the first fruits of his time and power. For the spirit of enterprise is unquenchable and internal in the face of the war and turmoil to come. The Bulletproof Bluster. That was the title of Yasukawa Yoshiko's notes. Press conference with the Bulletproof Bluster, Chief Executive of Guangdong with Bulletproof Bluster, of course, trick it throughout. No better description. Existed for the present rule of the three pearls in the headspace he found himself in. The man was conven convi convenial. 
Kambavio. Julio assured him himself and confident in the future success of the city of Guangdong. Yoshiko had her doubts that the state could truly recover as well as much as she clearly believed it would be after the riots. Yet the optimism was still infectious, say she felt, if only for how Bula proven doubt-free it sounded. Then Masashida said something that gave Yoshiko pause. You may rest assured that Masashida will continue to do whatever is necessary for Guangdong's prosperity. Surely the man wasn't so self-absorbed as referring himself in the third person. Was he then referring to this company? And so, if did, and if so, did that not mean that the Masashida therefore planned to dominate everything and everyone? A move of which Masashida Masaharu himself was the sole beneficiary? Yasukawa, uh, Yoshiko, sighed as a conclusion to those realizations sunk in. Guangdong's inequities would carry on forever, then if Masashida had anything to say about it, I cannot be helped, she muttered, and kept writing. But the economy, 70% growth, dead GDP ratio is slowly going down. Where it's fair, I wish we could go higher. That'd be nice. Look at all that money we save by going to the military austerity. So much money. Almost 80% poverty. Looking out the window. Everything was solid in Koshinao than when Matsushita Masahara was ber had first set put in. There was a bit of a lull in the usual workday low. Less papers were signed, less reports to come through. The desk had been cleaned up and organized by a secretary earlier today, and there weren't any meetings or appointments today, for once. There was quiet, it was in the short supply these days, he noted. Matsushita's eyes followed the skyline, dominating the by buildings whose statures seemed to stretch endlessly into the space alongside cranes and scaffolding, populated by small specks of people building the new Koshu. Long steel bars swung in the cradles as the cranes carried them towards unfinished higher floors. None of this would have been possible, the chief executive surmised, without having ordered having the order having been restored by Sam, indeed, with the workers returning to the factories. The specters of instability had been banished from Guangdong, now teeming with life. Productivity had once soared, and if he doubted the reports, the sites in front of his office had silenced such thoughts. He looked up at the clock, a bit early, he thought, but he could stop working for the day. For now, everything was fulfilled with the Guangdong that he built with his own blood, sweat, and tears. Forwards to the future. Oh, happy new November, everybody. 51.31 billion. Now, how high is it going to go? Or is that already there? 52.24. Yeah, it could be better, but whatever. Okay, do that one anyways. Region so. They love us. Somewhat. And let go. We ended with 53 seats. My god, that's so good. Auto loaders, huh? A peculiar situation. Tensions in China are still at an all-time high today as President Gao has formally condemned Japan's actions concerning the elimination of Chinese nationalists. A press leak from two days ago detailed a joint military operation between the Chinese Army and the Camp Lai in regard to the elimination of various nationalist groups. Gao's condemnation of Japan is sure to heighten the already growing tensions between the two nations. Matsushita turned the TV set off with a click. He let out a shaky sigh. Chinese and Japanese tensions were at a boiling point. He knew that if... When, when conflict erupted, Guangdong had to make a stand, Nom normally. The choice would be simple, with Matsushita siding with Japan and the upper echelons of Guangdong society, but the decision would be absolutely shattering. The Chinese majority nation, not to mention the numerous Zhujin who increasingly felt more loyal to their Chinese brethren than to Matsushita himself. Guangdong was doomed to death and destruction no matter what he did. Matsushita stood up slowly and walked to the shelf in his office. He reached for his bottle of sake and glass. He found himself drinking sake more and more each day. It was the only thing that calmed his nerves anymore. Matsushita felt the alcohol burn his throat. There were many decisions to make. Who to talk to, who to side with, who to court. It was all so much. Matsushita worked hard to get where he was, always being opposed by everyone, being used by others for personal gain, and always watching what he did. He always knew that whoever he chose to decide, his career would be finished. A bit of sweat rolled down the flustered chief executive's face, dropping it down into his desk. Matsushita looked at the droplet. To him, it was like the first drop of blood from a nosebleed, signifying his impending suffering. He was trapped. The weather for tomorrow will be thunderstorms. And, and it will be blooming. Explosive reactive armor. I will never use this in TNO. Oh well. Legacy, the phone rang for a moment. Matsushita Masaharu. Let it ring. He already knew who was on the other end. He had been expecting this call. It was just a matter of whether or not he was ready to pick up the phone. With a sigh, he finally picked up the phone and put it to his ear. Hello, father. Masaharu said and went through... Though Discord might have existed in his heart, he did not dare to let it show in his voice. It's been a while. I trust Osaka's been treating you well? Well enough, said Matsushita Konosuke, and a voice so familiar that it almost made Masaharu homesick. Though Konosuke might only be the father-in-law and adoptive father Masaharu to Masaharu, the man was as real of a father as they came, for better or for worse. Life in Osaka isn't what I decided to call you about, though, Masaharu. What I want to ask you is, will you be able to attend the annual stockholders meeting in Osaka this year? I know you've been busy, but I would appreciate your presence this time. The changes have been happening in parts thanks to you. Hmm, Masaharu pretended to think about it for a moment. The answer was yes, of course. Even if he could afford to disappoint his father, he wouldn't dare. Still, it was always good to pretend like you had more options than you did, especially when dealing with businessmen. Alright, I think I can stop by, but I'm a busy man even now. Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to stay that long. That earned a genuine chuckle from Konosuke, which brought a smile to Masaharu's lips. It was so weird to hear his father laugh, he must be pleased indeed. Is something funny, father? Oh, not much. It's just, I could hardly expect you to be anything other than busy since you made all of Guangdong a stronghold for the Masashita brand. You did fantastic work with that. I'm proud of you, Masaharu. Masaharu hesitated hearing that before finally deciding on a reply without a hint of insincerity. 
Thank you, Father. Well, my friends, we did it. Monster Chief's achievements are his own in peace and in war. And thus ends the story of the Ascent Air for now. And thank you for playing Guangdong. We hope you enjoyed playing as much as we did. We finally made his dad proud. That makes me feel special. Not really, no. It makes me feel happy, though. This is, this is great. Matsushita Electric reigns supreme over Guangdong, and Matsushita Masaharu revels in knowing that it's all under heaven is here. Is his, really. Where he once was an executive among many, sharing the spoils of Guangdong's profits, now he towers over all of them, directing profit and prestige as he sees fit. His benevolence feeds his workers and rewards his allies, his wrath cares little for the suffering of malcontents and his enemies, with Matsushita Electric fusing with the state. A distinction between the personal, corporate, and common interests have faded into nothingness. A personal kingdom that, even under, as rumors of war sweep through the streets, is Matsushita, Matsushita's, Masaharu's unvarnished triumph. It is 1972, of course, and Matsushita Masaharu has proven to be the world. And the man whose opinions matter most of all, that he is his own man. God dang, I love The guys have done a fantastic job with Guangdong. I love it so much, but... Hey, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. We've done fantastic, the devs have done fantastic, and I just can't wait to see what else TNO has in store for us, because there's so much going to happen with this mod so like i said let me know what you thought of the campaign in the comments below if you enjoyed the video though leave a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link in the description below and i will see you tomorrow in another campaign thanks for watching have a great rest of your day